all of the early mornings and late nights. Coming home after an exhausting hunt. Putting in all the extra work, even when people aren't watching. And just wanting to crawl into bed, but you sit down and you clear your SD cards and you organize your footage. It's all the little things and all the things that add up to be successful. And you pack your bag for the next morning just to lug in another 50 pound bag just at the chance. It allows me to go out there and do what I love and show everyone that just being an average person you can put in a little bit of extra work or a lot of extra work and you can get something out of it. The chance of sharing a story like the stories we're about to share. Really you can pretty much do whatever you set your mind to as long as you grind. All right. Smoked her. Yeah. Oh, the shot was far back. That's crazy. A little bit far back. Oh, dang it. I wish I would have put it just a hair further.
Oh man, guys. I feel a little bit, a little bit iffy about the shot. You know, you gotta remember, you can see where the hole was on that deer. I, I got some really good footage once she stopped there and I zoomed in on it. You could see the hole, but like I said, you gotta remember we're up in the tree and that arrow's gonna be angling down quite a bit. I, I know it's not a heart shot. I don't know about lungs. I might've, might've got her lungs, but I feel like if it was a double lung or something like that, um, she probably would have just ran until she ran out of air. So I don't really know. It was kind of weird how she just kind of sat there, but there was a, another bigger doe and then two smaller ones that were all with her. Um, she definitely is hurt and I'm pretty confident that she's gonna die. The other bigger ones right here. There's still deer around us right now, but um, yeah, I don't know. We're, we're definitely not gonna jump the gun and go too quick, but maybe here in a little bit, just get down and look for some blood and find my arrow. But I know that, like I said, with the shot angling down and the arrow went all the way through, I definitely tore it up pretty good. And I don't think she's gonna live from that. So I don't know, we'll hang out for a couple more minutes here and then, I don't know, stay with us. And we're gonna, we're gonna see what happens here. And I was kind of questioning the shot, but after I went back and looked at it, um, she is quartering away a lot too. So I think that shot placement is a lot better than what I thought. And then when I rewatched it too, you could see her really just licking her lips. Like, um, I don't know, I've seen deer do that before after I shot them and it's usually a good sign that they're gonna die. But just found the arrow here and you can see I shot her, must have shot her like right here and it just sprayed blood right out the backside. The arrow's right here, and it is absolutely covered. And I mean covered in blood. Clean pass through. There's a bunch of blood all over that thing. It's gonna be a dead deer for sure. So uh, we're gonna head back to the truck here, drop some stuff off, probably drive a little closer. and. Or maybe even go get the four-wheeler. We could just drive right into the woods and get her. Because I don't want to be marching around and uh, getting too much scent on the ground. Um, yeah. I'm going to just mark the spot here with the arrow. And we'll come back here in a little bit. She is piled up right there. I'm starting to get worried. She did make it down this hill a little bit, but didn't even make it all the way to the bottom. Alright guys, so we found the deer here. And I was actually very shocked. Um, we followed this blood trail down the hill, probably made it 150 yards from where I shot it. And this thing's laying here and it was already stiff. I mean, this thing probably died within five minutes of when I shot it. So that makes me feel a little better about it. And uh, I don't know, the shot was definitely back a little further, but it got the job done. Like I said, when I was up in the tree, um, and when I got on the ground, from the angle that I was at in the tree and how she was kind of quartered away, it pretty much just sent that arrow right where it was supposed to go. And got the first deer of the year here, uh, all on video. Um, I'm pretty proud of this one, honestly, because everything worked out and I was a little bit worried, but you know, once we climbed down and found the arrow here just painted red, I wasn't very worried about it. Um, but yeah, couldn't be happier. Good sized dough, got some meat in the freezer now. And 
give us some confidence and kicked off the, the year. So let's keep it rolling. Hopefully we can get some good bucks on the ground now. Hey guys, it's the 16th of October. Colin and I are out here this morning. First day of early muzzleloader, so I got muzzleloader with me and Colin's got a bow. Feeling like a good morning. Nice and calm out here. A little bit of a cold front. Hoping we can make something happen today. I can see the steam coming out of his nose on the camera. I don't see it. It's looking our way, I think. You can literally see just, you can just see its breath just pouring out of it. Is it just steam Oh yeah, it's a good one. It's a good one, Kate. It's a really good one. It's literally less than 100 yards away right now. Can you see it? I don't see it right away. It's just standing there. It's coming. It's coming, babe. The shitty thing is it's kind of downwind. But we might be fine if it keeps to the right. Try to get a shot if you can. Do you want to shoot that one? Do you want to shoot that one? It's a nice one. If he turns. 
sideways. Wait for him to turn sideways. shot take it. Just wait. Well, we got good news, guys. We just found blood. Meeting up with the other two. They're out in the field here. They said that they saw one of the bucks come out. So uh, hopefully we can find this thing. But we did find a couple little drops of blood here. I'll show you what we found. So we got a nice little drop there, right there. It's kind of hard to see here, but he definitely jumped the fence. I don't know, there, there's some on this leaf here. There were some other leaves that had it. I think we stepped on them and kind of messed it up, but he definitely came out on this trail. So we're just gonna keep following it out and see if we can see if we can find him. We got down, was trying to rewatch the video to kind of specifically look at, you know, what tree the deer was by so we could start tracking blood, but we couldn't pinpoint it. So we went where we thought it ran to um, came up to a fence line um, that had a trail going out into the hay field and found some blood there. Um, but once we got to the hay field, it was so hard to see that we couldn't see anything. So we um, just started looking around more, just trying to find blood. Um, but haven't found anything yet tonight. Um, we're just going to let it. Colin's stepmom and sister were hunting out of a blind on the same land and they possibly saw it. Um, they don't know if it's the exact one I shot at or not, but if it was, ran across the hay field and into another woods, but it was way too dark to um, start going through there and we didn't want to push it out if it was still alive. So uh, kind of just hung up the hat for the night and we're gonna go back in the morning and see what we can find. Oh man, well, I was hoping that I could bring everyone good news this morning, but unfortunately we did not have any luck. We were trying to get someone to come with a dog and couldn't get anyone to show up. Unfortunately, I understand it. It's It was a Sunday night, now it's Monday morning, so a lot of people got to work and they got lives and everything, but um, weren't able to get a dog out here. So we came back and just tried looking for more blood in the daylight again. That was a no-go. We tried grid searching. Woods way back here behind me, um, which is in the direction that they ran. And no luck there either. And then we kind of went back and just looked through some places again, closer to where we shot it. and. Just couldn't find it so i'm hoping that the deer survived and that it's all right you know we only found i'd say we maybe found like 20 drops of blood altogether. so we really didn't find hardly any blood but um the bad thing is it it looked like it was starting to pick up when it ran out into the hay and now of course the ground's all wet and i think the blood's kind of washing away so I hate to have it end like this on this deer, but I don't know. I don't think there's anything else we can do. Um, gonna let my uncle know that 
we hit one and just to keep an eye out for it, but it happens. This happens to everyone. If it hasn't happened to you, then you haven't been doing it long enough, so it sucks, but we're just gonna keep at it and try to hit the reset button. There he is. We found him. Well, man guys, this has been a crazy experience. I think the last time I talked to you guys was Sunday night. Couldn't find it. Um, Kyle and I, rearranged our schedules on Monday, went out Monday morning. We did line up a dog for Monday, but it fell through. Um, we went and, you know, kind of grid searched all the spots that we thought it would be. Um, ended up not finding it Monday morning. Just went home and just kept thinking about it. Kyle and I both had this gut feeling that it was dead somewhere and we just couldn't find it. We knew that, you know, we're in these woods enough shed hunting that someday we might come across it. Um, but we just kept thinking about it because right after I shot, Colin looked at me and said, you know, how'd you feel? And I just felt really confident about the shot. And if you ask Colin, that doesn't happen all the time. So Colin, you know, talking to some of his hunting buddies, like everyone just kept you know, saying, you know, when you shoot with the muzzle loader, you're not always going to find blood, um, especially if there's not an exit wound on him, the blood's not going to be pouring out. So um, this other guy reached out. He has a young dog in training, um, training to find deer and, you know, follow the scent trails, blood trails, things like that. And he just offered to come out and have good training for his dog, whether we found it or not. Um, we just kept walking around tonight and then eventually Colin and this um, guy and his dog just started going crazy and they walked right up on the buck and it was laying in a spot where pretty much the only spot we hadn't checked. He probably ran about 200 yards from where I shot him, kind of doubled back um, and stayed in the woods. Um, I don't know. I'm just kind of speechless. This is just, you know, I'm kind of sad that, you know, we didn't get any meat out of this. Obviously it's been a couple days, but I'm just so thankful. Um, if that guy who came out with the dog is watching this, I'm just really grateful. There's really nice and kind people like you to come out and, you know, help track this deer. And this is just, you know, it seems like Kyle and I always just get the crazy stories about deer, but, um, I'm just really happy. This is my biggest buck that I've ever shot um, to this date. Hopefully more to come in the future, but my early muzzleloader tag is filled and just super happy and grateful that we found this um, today and yeah, just super happy. <laughs>